um, you've seen some sneak peeks making octopus come alive in clay. I used to have an eating disorder. Filming and sharing my life as I live, travel, build out a van and a tiny home pushes my limits, sometimes making me face my relationship to my body. Some of my past, I feel like I'm scared of talking about it because it's a little vulnerable. Head on. This week, I have to face my fears. To be lovable, to be worthy. How we feel in our skin, our level of confidence, affects all of us. Join me this week as we figure it out together. I'd love if you would subscribe and hit the like and notification bell and we'll continue this journey of growth and self-affirmation together. Time for a run. <sighs> my aim is to feel better in my body, to take better care of the skin I'm in. And I've been craving a little more exercise and running is free, just requires a little effort. So I'm for my first run. A gentle one where I run, walk, run, walk, so I'm not pulling any muscles. And now I'm gonna pop into the owl forest and stretch. Maybe I'll see more owls, but the owls were so interested in the dog last time that they're unlikely to come out and be visible with humans just as they are. But we'll have a look. Okay, that's interesting. I mean, I would say the cougars are here because there's water here. In nature, I don't feel judged. I find it easier to simply be present with what is around me. I don't have to impress or sell myself promote my skills and capabilities, I only need but listen and observe to be at peace and connected. And see the bird that's... There's a black bird above, or blue, yelling at the owl. I knew we would find the owls! Oh, that bird is neat. Other employment. He might have said, Harry Potter doesn't pay enough. I don't want to work for a homophobic workplace. <laughs> yeah, hi, buddy. Good morning, everybody. It is a glorious day. It's been very smoky here in the last few days. So has been cooler. Um, and I'm excited because today I'm going to make my first go at doing some product photography for all the pottery that I've made. Um, you've seen some sneak peeks of some of the pottery that I've made and I'm Pottery has also become this beautiful, safe space for me. Here, I don't have an end of year goal, goal setting or KPIs. I get to create imperfectly, exist imperfectly, and indulge my love of the fantastical octocephalopod family of creatures that have so captured my entire attention and fascinations. Tapping back into this hobby that I used to spend hours doing as a teenager, I get to combine my creativity, my need for a quiet, focused space, and the desire to share my love 
of art and the underwater with you all in such a beautiful tangible way comes together. I'm making mug and vases and cups and plaques and candlesticks and hopefully jewellery in the future. And I'd love your suggestions of anything that you'd like me to make. Maybe things that are van life safe. Things that you might find useful in your worlds that I could make for you. It's pottery day and I'm having such a great time. A couple of pieces already and this one is gonna be a little go with the flow wall plaque. I am covered in clay and having a great time. I can't wait to show these all to you, put them on my website. I'm just loving, everything will be octopus themed, everything is hand built, not done on the wheel, so it's all like slab. And I am so happy, I got some really amazing news today and it just was the perfect thing for me to do, to come here, do some pottery, make some things, look. My clay's even got my nail on it. I am so excited to be able to make beautiful things and share them with you. This is so fulfilling and it feels like a beautiful way of giving back to you guys all the beautiful support that you've given me. So I really hope you enjoy. Um, I'm really enjoying showing you some parts of the actual build process um, through time lapses and bits like that. This is uh, like a stone looking clay and I'm gonna put a beautiful uh, transparent slash blackwash glaze over it so it just picks up the texture and the detail but yeah oh I'm having the time of my life as of posting this video you can go on my website and purchase the first batch of octopus crafted creations it's www.flossyrocks.ca please bear with me as I store package ship everything out from the confines of my van and whatever closest post office to me at the time. I have also my YouTube stickers and my Octopus Go With The Flow stickers too. If you want to throw one of those on your van, on your vehicle, on your wall, on your mirror or your drink bottle, just to make you smile a little bit more throughout the day. Everybody has a something to contribute in a place <laughs> in the world and a talent that they bring. Attention to detail is not a bad thing. It's not, sometimes. <laughs> Many times. <laughs> All of your purchases mean a lot and are greatly supporting me. As recently, I decided to quit a job that I'd only just taken that was making me miserable in order to prioritize my mental health and happiness. But as we all know, that always doesn't pay the top dollar. In community, we support each other and I encourage you to do things that make you happy so that you're not living your life with any regrets down the line. <sighs> I just got done three hours of making pots, making octopus come alive in clay and it's been so fun. I'm tired, I think that meditative state plus the amount of concentration it takes oh, and it's quite warm out so I'm happy I made some stuff I made some cute things and I'm very thrilled I can't wait to show you all um, and I hope you find your area of creative expertise it can be as simple as baking a pie or carving a piece of wood or making something in your um, workshop like honestly the amount of fulfillment I feel from taking something that is nothing and making it into something that is value and beauty is incredible and I'm so joyous that I even get to share this with you guys and that from some of the comments some people were interested in them yeah Next up, I have to figure out how I'm going to distribute them. Like, 
I need to find uh, some shipping boxes and paper and uh, stuff to wrap and take care of these things because they're fragile and I want to be able to send them out to you without any danger of breaking it. And I'm hoping to do it um, with as little plastic as possible. So wish me luck. <sighs> That's the thing. Suddenly I've got myself into a shipping business. Stuff I have to post out. Um, but it'll be worth it. I cannot wait to see these things in your hands. See the photos that you send me of your mugs and your pots and your octopus things. I should go eat something because I'm starving. Anyway, good night. See you later. And I'm working towards a video that's going to be more about like learning to love yourself and appreciating like your self reflected back in pictures and a little bit more about um some of my past i feel like i'm scared of talking about it because it's a little vulnerable um because i've had an eating disorder in the past and that kind of stuff has really affected me but i think it's also important to talk about as one gets older your body changes learning to love and appreciate yourself through those evolutions is so important and so we're going to do a bit of that and some photography of my pottery together just to make some beautiful beautiful art and i'm really excited about making photographic art i was a photographer before i became a filmmaker so it will be nice to kind of show you a little bit of that part of myself where i love taking photos in the meantime i'm making breakfast I grew these tomatoes. When I was younger, I was in front of a camera a lot. I dated a photographer and started photographing folks myself. I hope eventually to travel around in my van, taking some sort of portrait photography business with me on the road. Can you just imagine me rocking up at your town, taking pictures with you and transporting you into a fantasy world where you get to be anyone or anything that you could dream of, anyone you could imagine yourself to be? That's a good amount of water, but I need to put a bolt on that. It's come and broken off. That's my water tank from the other side. Again, missing another bolt, but it's well fully supported. Um, underneath by that crossbeam. Yeah, what a done. Check. Getting the van set up off grid, my water topped up to take with me, the solar power set up, and the Starlink set up. I'm getting settled into this beautiful location for a few focused days of photography work. Very soon, I won't even have to do this. Next month, sometime in October, hopefully with the help of all of your support buying my pottery, I'll have saved up enough money to get a roof rack installed on top of the van to mount these solar panels permanently, saving me from cutting them around, loading them in, loading them out. My nerves will be greatly appreciated to have them mounted and not have to worry. Maybe I'm being overly romantic. 
making everything into a vessel of storytelling. When there is less repetition in the mundane, the mundane does really start to tell its own story. So get comfy and settle into the story of a slightly different way of living. Because I want these photos to be some of the best I've taken and because I'm not going to be able to keep this pottery, I want these photos as like a real special memory of the artwork that I've created. I have pulled out my big DSLR cameras. Both of them are quite old, so they're not like modern um, vlogging film cameras where your autofocus is instant and they're both great photography cameras. Um, only one of them can film up to 4K, so that gives you an idea of the age of the other one of it. But they can take beautiful photos. So, I'm really excited about doing that. We're going to go into the forest this way and put the mugs in some gorgeous places and take some more pretty pictures. Yeah, I am super stoked. It's going to be amazing. I think that creators are twisted. I think that we are often broken, really tortured by this humongously powerful, insufferable, irrational desire to create art and to see the magic and beauty in the world around us. Maybe you see a little of that in yourself, in the way you exist in the world, whether it be your workshop, your home, your garden, your shed, under a car, or the creative spaces you inhabit. For some of us, that is what keeps us going. That's what we can think about all day. We pretend like we don't need to convince ourselves that this need exists, that this expression is irrational. So we morph ourselves into society. We pretend we don't have to pretend that we are okay if we don't express ourselves. That we can breathe normally if we don't create art. But we can't. They forget we are human, and that we experience things just like everybody else. And that we draw inspiration from all sorts of sources and energies to keep on living and creating. When you are faced with nothing but heartbreak in front of you, you try to put on a happy face and pretend everything's okay. To use that to your advantage to pour out your thoughts, your feelings and emotions into whatever things it is that you create. I know a lot of us experience really sad times in our lives, whether it's heartbreak or passing away, loss, disruption, uncertainty, grieving or climate change. It's really a tough time and a lot of us just want to curl up into a ball Accept that those feelings are valuable. Those vulnerable feelings are what leads us to creating, but also to healing. I find that creating art around the feelings I'm having, whether I'm really happy or really sad or really brokenhearted or really depressed, whatever it is, it's a very powerful healer to sit through these motions and really be in them. I think that us as humans, we really benefit from submerging ourselves so deeply in the negative emotions that when we use that energy to create art, we process it this way, sometimes a little faster than others who try to just get on with their days and ignore the turmoil inside of them worth it 
all this uphill. I've already come up some elevation. You know, this kind of just goes straight up. When your body is leaning over at like a 30%, 30 degree angle, at least you know you're on a steep hill. You don't have to be skinny. You don't have to be a supermodel. You don't have to fit the world's standard of a beauty norm to be lovable, to be gorgeous, to be desirable, to be worthy. You have to only value and love yourself. This is like the life hack nobody tells you. You kind of have to figure it out yourself. We live in a world around us that capitalizes off us when we feel bad about ourselves. We spend money to buy products touted to make us look younger, have more or less or nicer hair or smoother skin, gain muscle or lose it. Have you ever thought how revolutionary it would be on the profiteers of this world if we all suddenly started truly loving ourselves? I know this isn't something that could happen overnight. We have generations of passed down shame, guilt, perspectives on our bodies that make us shrink, hide, mask, dress up, dress down, work out or diet. How many big businesses depend on us not liking what we see in the mirror? That love to keep us isolated from the love and support of community to sell their latest gadget, product, or solution that is pitched to bring us closer to a fictitious idolization of what the perfect version of a human should look like. One often based on a problematic celebration of youth, whiteness, and unachievable beauty standards, which ironically are forever changing. Therefore, seeing yourself in photos and loving it, to me, is a radical act of reclamation. Constructing your reality or mystical image is done to highlight and remind you of your power, bringing yourself back to being your own beloved. I have some lights to light up my way off of the mountain top. This is dark and going to be a little more interesting to leave than it was to arrive. <laughs> Should probably just go back and check, I haven't dropped anything. Got everything that I came up with. So funny at this time of night. Then just a simple leaf falling down starts to feel like there's a creature in the woods or something. And it's not. Oh, my hair. <sighs> oh, yeah. It's a little crackle in the foot. So funny. I get so jumpy. <sighs> Tis fine. Tis fine. Everything is fine. It was worth it. It's so beautiful. But I'm going to need to turn the camera off because... I need to see where I'm going, pull the hair out of my face and make sure I don't run face first into a bear or something. Maybe you, like me, have been going through it a little bit in the last few months when summer creates this freedom to wear less clothes, 
but also makes you more aware of what you look like. I hope that you have found this supportive and encouraging you to take a new way of looking at everything. I want to say a huge thank you to all of your comments. I'm going to read all of them, especially on this video. I think I've touched on some really tender topics and I want to acknowledge that sometimes that might bring up a lot of feelings for you all and it definitely does for me. Um, if you want to share more like this you can join us over on my Patreon. I greatly appreciate all the folks there and a huge thank you to those of you who subscribe and continue to show up every week. I can see you there. We had a live chat with Amanda last week and it was really beautiful and I got to chat with you all. Maybe I'll do one of those myself soon. Anyway, take care of yourself and I will see you all next week. If you haven't already, hit the subscribe button, the notification bell, and I'll see you on the next one.